Hi, Filmlight community. Uh, my name is John Darrow, and I am the lead colorist here at uh, Warner Brothers um, Post-Production Creative Services on the historic uh, Warner Brothers lot here in Burbank. Um, what we do here is uh, servicing the studio, obviously, but um, also doing theatrical projects for all the other major studios and including uh, independent film productions. Um, what I want to talk about today is uh, just some, some uh, tools that I like on the base light, and uh, I want to show you guys um, one kind of uh, cool trick that I just used on the last film I did, which was Scoop. I started my career, gosh, 20 years ago now, uh, at Photocam, which is a film lab uh, also here in Burbank. Uh, started out, um, you know, just paying my dues, uh, cleaning film, and and then I eventually worked my way up to a, a telecine assist. Uh, I did dailies, and then got into scanning and recording, and it was at that time where I really started to hone my color skills, where we were developing uh, 3D lookup tables to match back for print simulation, and and I, you know, coming from the digital side of things and already having a computer background, it, um, that was really the, the the tipping point for me where I had to learn uh, the photochemical side. And it was it's been so valuable to me in my career, uh, understanding how films were graded uh, for the last hundred years, and just in in the last twenty have we we really been able to use these digital tools at the advanced level that we use them now. So from my early days, um, when I first started to grade, uh, what, what Photokim did was they sat me with a film timer. And that film timer was Dan Muscarella, best film timer that's ever lived. Uh, that, those three years that I, that I spent with him in the room and, and seeing how he interacted with the clients and seeing the subtleties of just a half point of yellow, um, that's invaluable to me. I mean, that, there's, there's no better education than, than learning from you know, one of the masters of the craft. Ultimately, three years ago, I moved over here to Warner Brothers, uh, where uh, I fell in love with the base light. And I always say it's not the sword, it's the samurai. You shouldn't focus too much on the tools. But when you get to a certain level of samurai, it's really good to have a very, very sharp sword. And there is nothing that can beat the base light when it comes to being the top of the top of color correction. Uh, it really is just a, a, a pleasure to work on. Uh, it never gets in your way, and that's what I love about it the most. Uh, when you're working with clients and, 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 and filmmakers, you, you never uh, have to stop the flow of the room. Um, because when you have the talent in the room, it's such a creative process that you never want the tool to be in your way. And I think over the years now, I've never been stumped by a request from a filmmaker. I've never had to say no. And that's what I love most about the base light, is that really anything that you can imagine having done to your picture, this machine can accomplish that. So what I want to show you guys today is uh, my favorite tool in base light, which is the advanced uh, matte tool. And what this does is we're basically using channels that exist in EXR to control the image um, in a segmented way. So we can do grades to just the foreground or just the background um, in a volumetric way. And what's really nice about that is that it works in conjunction with all the existing base light tools. So you can do things where you use a depth map and then you can key inside of that. So now you essentially have a volumetric key uh, or you take your circles and, and square shapes and they turn into spheres and cubes in a volume space. Uh, it makes isolating uh, uh, just, just, just a breeze and, and really gives you that fine control to really enhance the picture to that next level without having to, to put in all the, the manpower to roto things out. Um, you can really just get to that, that level of finesse so much quicker. So what I'd like to show you today is a, a shot from Scoob where we did just that. Okay, so now we're over here in Baselight and we have a shot from Scoob.
And what I want to show you today is a technique that we used on Scoob extensively where Real Effects supplied me depth maps that were placed inside of the EXR final renders from them. Uh, first thing that we need to do, let's go ahead and add another layer. We go into our Mat XYZ operator. What we're going to do is we're going to select the depth channel from the EXR. That brings up our depth keyer. First thing I do is I switch this from cube to sphere. I feel like sphere gives me a, a easier key, a softer key uh, to begin with. Um, speaking of soft keys, we want to increase the feather. Um, now, depending on the actual uh, space in the shot, how, how, what's the scale of the shot, this value will change. For this particular shot, we're going to use a value of 1,000. Okay, so now that's our key, and it's looking pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and decrease the saturation on the background. And then decrease the contrast on the background. And we'll do the exact opposite for the foreground. So let's add a little bit of contrast and a smidge of saturation. Okay, here's a before, here's after, before, after, before, after. I think in general that's looking pretty good. So we can take this one step farther where now that we have the foreground and background kind of segregated to their own grades, um, we can make another layer and pull a key. So let's say that I wanted to change the cyan value of Scoob's collar. Now that'd be difficult without, you know, a, a pretty extreme qualifier or like a roto um, in the sense that there's cyan values in the background that are similar to his collar color. Well, we can go ahead and pull our depth map and then key inside of that. Okay, so now we have a pretty good key on his collar. So this also works with all of our other operators. So right here, I'm going to use a garbage map to further isolate that cyan value that's in the foreground. Now this was great because having this depth information really cut down the need for me to have external map passes provided by production. Essentially, just using this depth pass with the existing base light tool set, I was able to isolate any character and any kind of situation that the creatives were asking me to perform a correction on. So by basically pulling a key for the cyan collar and then using our standard mat operations, we can go ahead and isolate that value of cyan from the other values of cyan that are in the background. What that essentially does is it takes our keying operation and makes it a volumetric keyer. You know, it's one of those things that uh, I think my style is whatever the creatives and the talent are imposing onto their baby, onto their film. So for me, um, I can be adaptive and, and kind of go with the flow of what the DP and the director are intending to create. And I think that's really important for a colorist. Um, you, you can basically show me a lookbook, show me some references, and we can build a visual language around that that's in service of the story you're trying to tell, that, that really is getting to the truth of it, to the, to the root. Um, and as long as we're always going back to that and never stray too far away, uh, I really do think that the, the quality of the project is elevated.
um, when you just stay on that path. Uh, the challenges for high dynamic range right now um, is, is, is really just making sure that everybody's looking at the same picture across the board. Uh, there's so many HDR displays, but it's kind of a moving target. Um, is, does your HDR display show 3,000 nits? Does it show 1,000 nits? Is it kind of pseudo HDR and like 600 nits? You know, these these questions right now are start are starting to be answered. Now, obviously, uh, base lights, um, color management helps out with that. I think ACES uh, um, 1.1 and, and, and 2.0 uh, is, is answering some of those questions for us. And so it's starting to become easier. But I think that's the biggest challenge right now is making sure that everyone's on the same page from, from camera and capture through dailies to editorial to visual effects and ultimately here in the, in the, in the final finish in the color bank. So my favorite base light hack uh, has got to be using this X keys. Um, what I have on this is basic color control uh, and the ability to jump uh, to and from cursors if we're you know looking at a reference or something. And what I do is I throw that up in front of my console um, to the theater seats, and I can actually sit with the creatives, with the talent, uh, being right next to them without the distraction of scopes and monitors um, in my face and just be focused on the projection screen. So th this is something that I, I definitely um, uh, can't live without. Uh, another hack, it's not necessarily a base light hack, but just a good DI bay, we're living in dark rooms hack, is taking uh, glow-in-the-dark tape and putting it on your things that you tend to lose a lot, like the pin for the base light. Um, this way, when the lights are off, you always know where the pin is, and you can find it really easily. I think the best thing to do is uh, be like a shark. Always, always keep swimming. Um, I think as far as evolving workflows go, um, it's not something that you necessarily have to keep up on. You have to just focus on what, what is in the way of you getting your work done and solve those pain points for you. Um, you know, reading somebody else's uh, a, a tutorial or blog about what works for them might not necessarily be the best thing for every colorist. Um, at least for me, a lot of my genius comes out of pure laziness. If I hate doing a repetitive task, I'm going to look for ways to automate that away, uh, whether that's through code or just better communication or potentially just eliminating that task altogether uh, if it's not serving the greater good. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate Filmlight for uh, putting out these videos. Uh, I know I've learned a lot from, from the rest of the series, and so hopefully... Uh, everyone has been able to take away something from this one. Happy grading. Cheers.